Hey, how's it going? So, first of all, welcome to the Leo Adverse Podcast. I'm very glad that you decided to give this a listen. Uh, for today's episode, I have Team Keras Online member with me, Melissa. We have been working together since the beginning of June 2021, where she's been doing super, super well on her journey so far. And I thought I'd get her on today, today's podcast not only to share her journey of the last few months, but also her story of the years prior to that, where she felt like she was going in circles. Uh, she felt like she was making next to no progress with her fitness goals and again I always think that could be quite an interesting listen because oftentimes people only share the success side of their stories and not so much the struggles to do for the years prior. I hope you enjoy the listen and if you haven't already check out the teamcareersonline.com website which I will leave in the show notes because I have loads of articles in there as well as downloadable content which is free uh, covering the subjects of nutrition and training so definitely check that out and I hope you enjoy the episode. So for today's podcast, I have Melissa here with me. Uh, I've been, sh- we've been working together for a while now. Uh, super lovely. I really enjoy working with her. Uh, I don't want to say too much because I'm going to let her introduce herself. And I obviously I don't want to be introducing people for them. But otherwise, over to you, Melissa. You can say what you do, you know, uh, how, what you've been up to. And then we can go from there. Wonderful. Okay. Hey. hey. Um, I'm Melissa and yes we have been working together for a while I'm not exactly sure how many months but a few months yeah since June quite a few months yeah since June Um, so it feels like it's been a a forever kind of thing now Mm. (laughs) Um, but yeah so I am yeah I'm a student at the moment I work in the security industry um, and I'm studying two degrees because I really can't be asked to do two separate degrees and yeah that is social sciences and psychology um it's I think it kind of changes the way I look at everything yeah. and I'm forced to analyze every single person that I interact with and yeah I guess that works in my benefit maybe not for other people's benefits but definitely for mine um I'm in second year with that now it's been very very stressful but as always, Leo is very accommodating with um with how that works. And yeah, I guess there's a lot of things I could say. Yeah. Um, one thing that I think I will mention that is very helpful in all of this, I've got like really bad ADHD. And I swear that's probably the only reason that I can actually stick to, <laughs> to doing this because I get really like obsessive over certain things and it's like a new hobby and for some reason since June I've still been into it it's just become a part of my day-to-day but yeah I'm quite happy that my brain hasn't decided to <laughs> to stop that one yet and every time it decides to slowly go down that route Leah just rings me back in <laughs> so yeah no that's that's me well I'm super glad to hear that you're enjoying it um one thing I wanted to ask how so how are you finding the psychology degree in particular so far what drew you to that um or the psychology? So i've always kind of yeah like i've always um been the kind of person that i know in terms of future careers and stuff it has to be something that's involved in helping better people i'm not really sure in what context it has to be but that's i don't really feel satisfaction if i'm not doing that um and initially I wanted to go down the route of like a doctor or working as an EMT but I've got a really big phobia of seeing a dead person like Mm. I personally myself I'm not scared of dying that's great it's going to happen one day it's inevitable but I've got a fear of seeing somebody die or walking into a room and somebody's dead and I have to deal with it that that yeah I no that's not for me um so that kind of led me to go down the whole like social work avenue and psychologist and psychotherapist and analyst and all that kind of stuff um but the more I study it I think it's just it's something that's so important for me personally in my day-to-day life because everything is based on psychology you know mm-hmm. everything you do even your job is based on psychology you know how you interact with people um Huge amounts. will make a massive difference you know to mm-hmm. to like if they stick around or if they even if if they succeed it's all based on your psychology and how you interact with them and stuff so um yeah for me personally I'm more into like forensic psychology and criminal science but yeah so 
psychology nonetheless is definitely it's crazy like I find myself even last night like I'll just be lying in bed with my partner and we have these conversations where it's like she'll turn around to me and be so what psychologically you know what do you think about this or <laughs> and we go into this rabbit hole of breaking down everything I think about it you know I'm not a professional I'm not qualified yet but it definitely is interesting to see it from that perspective and I do love breaking things down like that yeah it's the reason why I took particular interest in that one more is because it's actually I was thinking of doing a degree in that uh, for a while more maybe like behavior train behavioral change psychology um, mm. because I, I know it's super important and uh, it's something that a lot of people I look up to in what I do mm -hmm. they, they they speak about it all the time so yes yeah, it's, it's super important uh, every day the way you interact with people and um and a lot of it like uh, even like past experiences for them as well can be coming into play so much in regard to you know why they're doing what they're doing now how they're reacting to it uh, it's just yeah so it's, it's a huge subject you could say literally so many things about it and uh, it's like you said yeah that it's there's just so much involved with it so I thought I was quite cool and you yeah. said you're in second year so you've only got what one more year left but is it three years yeah it's a three-year degree um, I've got my dissertation year next year which I'm not looking forward to um, but then I think I have to go into a master's so I don't know, like I kind of hate myself for it, but here we are, it's too late to back away now. I'm not going to be, I know that, I know I won't be fulfilled if I don't do it. Um, you'll do it. But it, it doesn't mean that it's easy. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll pull it off, I know you can. And how do you find the, the security side of what you're doing? Um, I mean, I've been in security for like six years now. Okay. It wasn't something that I wanted to do like a career thing, and it by no means is something that I've done as a career thing. Um, I've always known, like I said earlier, like that isn't the niche that I want to go down, but it was an opportunity that presented itself mostly because when I was 19, I went through this crazy phase growing up in this Portuguese household. As you know, you know, parents were very strict. Um, yeah. So I was never really allowed to like go out a lot and do stuff. And then one day I just turned around and rebelled and I was going out literally six days a week. But wow. yeah. I was doing this whilst I held like a full-time, you know, supervisor role. <laughs> and I never used to drink alcohol on my nights out. I was just having a great time off of water. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed the environment of mm. where I was going. Mm. And I became really good friends with the security team there. And then one day they were just like, why don't you come and, and do your license and come and join us? kind of started from there so I worked in that particular club for about a year and then slowly went into different types of security and now I do work for a really cool company um but I'm not it's not the role for me and I think the more I study what I'm studying the more I realize that the longer I stay in something that isn't relevant to what I'm studying the more I feel like I'm killing off my brain cells mm. so that's kind of I What's guess. that, sorry? Like, would you say it's just because it's not inspiring? Yeah, I mean, it's very, I like change. I don't like things to be quite monotonous and just the same. As much as, as a person, I love routine and I... I was going to say, yeah. Like having routine. You, you yeah. That does like routine, which is... Yeah, I love routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Oh, Karen, Karen. So... For me, that's something that I absolutely love and I can't go without routine. I feel really thrown off. But in terms of the job itself, it's not fulfilling for me. Mm. And like I said, you know, the more I learn about what I actually want to go down, the further away I feel from what I'm currently doing. Mm. Um, so I guess I'm just writing it out and trying to keep you're... my eyes and ears open and see if I can yeah. you're, you're, pick you're... up something else. Things will happen in good time, I'm sure of it. Um, one thing I did want to ask, I'm backtracking a little bit here, but I don't want to interrupt. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just genuinely because I've always been curious. Do you mind, where are your parents from in Portugal? My dad. So my dad is originally from Madeira. Yeah. I, 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 I um, have a friend who's from Madeira. And 
Yeah, and he now lives in the north. So he lives in Kimenez, just off of like Porto, oh, nice. like 30 minutes really away from Porto. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's lovely there. Really yeah. nice. So um, my mum, she moved to Madeira when she was about seven, but she's originally from Venezuela. Ah, okay. Yeah, so she met my dad, obviously, like when she moved over there. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's yeah. where they're from. Have you ever been to Gimarange? Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've, uh, my dad bought a house, I think, when I was about okay. 10 or 9 with yeah. his partner. And it was something that we'd done, like, every time we went to Portugal, obviously, you have a house there, so you just go there. And, yeah, we, all the time. But obviously, due to the pandemic, I haven't been able to fly back. I've been once, um, but that will change this year. I'm ready to <laughs> push through all these red lights, yellow lights and green lights mm. and go ahead and just get it done because I can't stay in this cold, cold country anymore. Yeah, it's freezing. Yeah. And I had that reminder when I went back last month. But yeah, give me a range. I've only been once. Um, I've only went once. Because I had a friend, I have a friend who who lived there. He lives in Manchester now, but I had a friend who was from there, and I, I went to visit once. Would love to go yeah. back because I didn't really get to see enough. But yeah, super historical city. So if you're if you're listening, yeah, and you want to visit Portugal, Guimarães would be a safe option if you maybe don't want to do the more mainstream cities in Lisbon and Porto. Uh, yeah, I would definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely, that's the city where Portugal was created, isn't it? Yeah, it was, that's where I was born. That's where, that's, so, that's where uh -huh. I started. Um, but yeah, so speaking about psychology, I actually wanted to start speaking about the next subject that I had in mind that you're obviously very mm. well aware of, is that, um, so obviously with what we've been doing since June, since the beginning of June, because I remember we started just as I was leaving Japan. Um, so it's been, what is that, six months now? Something like that. Um, how, so... Obviously, we'll speak about maybe why you decided to start later, but maybe how about, maybe you could talk to me about maybe like prior attempts with doing what you're doing. Um, maybe you could remind people, maybe you could mention obviously what your goal was and what is. It could have obviously changed within that time. Um, and obviously I'm going to know a lot of it, but I'll be asking you anyway, just so whoever's listening, so the listener yeah. and kind of maybe get some context, but yeah, tell me about prior attempts when it came to, to your goal, how you found it, what, what it was like for your early days and, you know, how it progressed throughout that time in your journey. And then we can go from there a little bit. Yeah, like, how did you get to, to fitness? Because I know that could be quite broad, but we'll, we'll go from there. I've, I've tried a lot of things. Mm. I know you're a great fan of all the, the fit teas and booties and herbal life. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've tried all of that, honestly. Like, I went through all of that. I went through um everything I I went through restricting myself so I think for me I love intermittent fasting but I think you have to know how to do it otherwise you could very easily just be starving yourself yeah. and not in a way that is feasible if you're working out and you're living being you know you need to eat um so you know I've, I've touched on the subject briefly before but when I was younger I had um, a slight eating disorder and it was very, like, I would calculate every single thing I've eaten down to a T and I could not go to sleep until I've burnt every single calorie and then some. Wow. So, you know, I was working full time. I'd be doing maybe 50 hours a week and every day without fail, I'll be in the gym for two hours. Sometimes I'll even go back after work every for another two day. hours. Every single day. Mm. and like from the outside I looked great like you know you would if you're in a massive calorie deficit and you're working out and you have the muscles in the right places and it looks great it mm. looks great and you get all these comments from people saying how great you look and how fit you look and you're like oh maybe I am doing something right mm. um but no my insides are broken mm. so yeah definitely I've, I've tried a lot of things a lot of things um i've even bought meal plans from loads of different people and it's just it's just not the one you know you've you mentioned something recently actually and i i thought it was so true you know you said in terms of why you don't do meal plans oh and, the, um, out the other how, yeah so you're saying you know you give somebody a meal plan it's like 
giving someone a fish and they can eat once and then you know yeah. you teach them how to actually plan their own meals and they can do that forever mm. uh, and yeah that's 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 really it that is it that's the truth do you have like any any examples of what your meal plans were like or how how did they go how long did you manage to stick with them for um not really long because a lot of these people that sell meal plans they're very generic meal plans they're not catered yep. to your mm -hmm. life you know they're not catered the to what you actually like them. yeah yeah it's, it's very generic you can give the same plan to about 10 people it's crazy but firstly it won't affect the same 10 people in the right way because somebody might have an iron deficiency and require a different type of food you know you might have someone who whose digestive system doesn't work really well with salmon but you're telling them to eat salmon four times a week or you know like it was, it was just so it was chaotic and I think the more I tried to stick to it, the worse I felt because I couldn't stick to it. Because realistically, how am I spending 70 pounds a week to get every single ingredient that they're adding into my mm. extensive meal plan? Mm. And it's just not feasible. Not for me. It wasn't. It might work for other people for sure. Mm. Um, not for me. I would, would you say that when you couldn't stick to it, did you feel guilty? Like, did you feel like you almost blamed yourself for not being able to stick to it? yeah for sure I did blame myself because realistically if I didn't stick to it I couldn't blame the person I bought it from mm. it was a me problem mm. and it's a very toxic culture Psych I think that, yeah. that whole yeah. yeah that whole thing where you blame yourself when mm. someone's really just set you up to fail yeah and that is, that's why yeah it was always surprising at how much I think people push meal plans or sell them and I know why they're doing it because they're just trying to make a, a quick bit of money um of course yeah and uh, but yeah it's just it always blows my mind and then what blows my mind even more is i see i've seen so many trainers pushing not only pushing meal plans but then they get they talk about how frustrated they are when people that buy it from them aren't following it to to the t and i'm just looking at that and i'm like well of course they're not that's just insane people aren't going to live their life like that and i think it just shows how out of touch they are with um, with where they are on their fitness journey and maybe mo and general pop and mm -hmm. it probably only works for like one maybe one percent of people because uh, yeah don't get me wrong yeah. there's going to be someone out there who maybe loves having a meal plan and they can do it really well but again that's going to be a very small minority uh, it could probably work for maybe elite athletes as well uh, and saying that i reckon it could work for them probably because they only, they have their own personal chef and probably because they have something yeah. for them so yeah that's and so yeah it's just a very small minority it can work for for everyday people for someone you know balancing maybe two degrees at university has a job um you know lives with their partner that they're not going to realistically be able to stay mm -hmm. in a meal plan 24 7 and that is it's as you said you maybe you didn't realize it but the person that sold it to you sort of set you up for failure there but at least you know that now yeah definitely I and mean, this is a massive difference because you you could be doing so great all week following this meal plan and then it gets to a Friday and somebody invites you out for dinner and you get really stuck and you either sit there not eating anything and not doing anything and just sipping on a glass of water um, or you enjoy yourself or maybe overindulge yourself because you kind of don't know what to do mm -hmm. and then you feel really crap about it the next day or like when you leave whether like you know for me now I know that I don't even think twice about it. If I get invited out somewhere or impromptu dinner or occasion or whatever, I really don't think twice about it. And I don't beat myself about it the next day, but I've learned how to make the better choices when I am put in that situation. Um, and it is possible, it is achievable. And it's, it's much less stress for me as well. I don't feel like I've failed. You know, on Thursday, just gone, end up going out to um, a show that my friend was performing in and, by the time that finished, I had no time to go home and cook and eat. This was like 10, 11 o'clock. Um, but I also didn't feel bad for the fact that I sipped on two gin and lemonade whilst I was watching the show. Like, I, I felt absolutely fine about it. And the next day, I just picked up and continued with it normally. I didn't eat less or penalise myself for it. And I feel like that's only made possible because you continuously drilled that into my brain that it is okay to be a human and you know as long as you're not doing this every single day it is okay and that's where the psychology comes into it <laughs> yeah that makes me super happy to hear 
and yeah it's as you said at the end of the day you're only human and and I do feel like and you said something there that I think is really important to highlight is that you said something because I think sometimes when people hear is oh there's nothing nothing is off plan you know I mean like nothing is out of bounds like nothing you can't mm. not have anything nothing is banned you can have everything you want some people hear that and they use that as like almost I don't know if excuse is the right word but just to enjoy themselves every day or almost every day and I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa just because nothing is just because there are no limits it doesn't mean it just because nothing is off limits I should say it doesn't mean there are no limits mm -hmm. so it's about balancing yeah. that as well and you know yeah enjoying it as you said once in a while makes the zero difference and if anything it's the best thing for your long-term progress as you probably know by now uh, because it's gonna it's, it's what's sustainable will keep you moving forward and um I mean mm -hmm. you go out you can have that fun and then know that you're gonna get back on plan the next day and you're absolutely fine yeah Honestly, it is. It's a game changer. And I think as well, like, I'm still at a very prime age in my life, you know. I can't not enjoy my life just because I also have fitness goals and health goals. It's, it's, not, it's not fair, I would say, even. Unless I was an athlete and I couldn't whilst I was, you know, during my competitive season, I'd have to eat specific things and not drink that. Absolutely, I get that. But I'm not an athlete. I'm just a normal person yeah so, yeah what would you say is uh is like what would you say is maybe the craziest nutrition rule or diet that you followed in the past does there is there one in particular that stands out to you? Is <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely i remember as soon as i heard it i messaged you straight away and i was dying um so i had this guy at work that i work with and he it's like, you know, you can tell he definitely works out. He looks quite good. Um, and I know it came from a good place. Like he genuinely was trying to give me advice because for yeah, him, is. this is maybe something that worked or something that he believed. But he was adamant that your body couldn't absorb more than 20 grams of protein in any sitting. And you actually had to wait three hours before you attempt to put the next 20 grams in. Wow. And I just literally, I looked at him and I was, I, I, it was at that point, I kind of didn't, it wasn't worth saying anything. I was just in <laughs> shock that he was to the really club. believing it. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have that all the time. Know to you know. Just like, shall I? And I just said to him, it? like, well, I've lost like over a stone, right? Mm. I'm like, and I've done this. Some meals I have 40 grams of protein in it, and my body's absorbing it. Like, mm. it's it's happening. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure people that are big muscle people like eat 50 60 70 grams in one sitting oh easily yeah it, it is what it is mm. <laughs> your body of course it he said uh, that it was a waste of protein if you eat any more than 20 you see, grams so yeah. that one did make me laugh uh, and that's a, that's another issue as well it's, i hear i see this happen so much is a uh, it's when so someone who's maybe super in shape they maybe they they heard a bit of misinformation and they've applied it themselves and because and then and i'm trying to think how i can phrase this they so they follow that rule as well as everything else that works but then so when they get their mm -hmm. result they then they'll then mention you know things that work and then they'll also mention maybe the things that didn't work as well but not realizing that because they've done everything at the same time that's why they got the results yeah. necessarily because they avoided having 20 grams of protein, more than 20 grams of protein at once. But that's how a lot of misinformation comes about as well, because then they'll tell the next person who's trying to get into their health and fitness, who doesn't know any better, they'll say, yeah, I've done this, and it's what, and that's why I look like this. And then obviously that person will blindly follow, and then, yeah, and then they'll stop. Yeah, of course. Them. That's what happens a lot as well. So yeah, it's, that's why it's important to to, I don't know I guess really just try and educate yourself on the topic even if someone does look good and sound like they know what they're speaking about mm -hmm. I think that had he have told me that a year ago I probably would have believed him but I was really grateful that he told me that when I was pretty set and I've I've learned you know I've taken the fundamentals of of the conversations that you know we have and the questions that I ask you because boy I ask you a lot of questions and I've, I was able to hear it, accept it, and, you know, I didn't feel like, oh, you're such an idiot for telling me that, you know, you should work on figuring, I just, I could see it came from a good place, mm. and he was yeah, trying sure. to help, but it was the wrong information. Yeah, I would say, yeah, most of the time it is from a good place, and you'll know, 
because they don't realize they're spreading misinformation. I mean, there was obviously that small minority of the time, which is obviously not going to apply here, where you know, someone is spreading misinformation because they have financial interests in it. Um, but that, that, that's mm. not a colleague. It's usually someone that, I don't know, who has a big following on Instagram. But um, so, yeah, when you were struggling with, so you were, so you were super in shape. I'm trying to build some context on the timeline here. So you were super in yeah. shape. And maybe physically, so but not mentally. Physically, you were, um, and yeah. then and then talk to me. So was it around the pandemic that you would say maybe you started? When when did you have a rebound? Would you say there was a rebound? What happened there? Was it during the pandemic? Or? So when I was like at my peak physical shape, that was when I was about eighteen, nineteen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm twenty six now. So it was a couple of years ago, and about 20 years old it kind of like slowly just not through any excessive bad habits or whatever but just accumulation of very small bad habits Mm. started to slowly put on weight slowly put on weight and you know you get into at that point I'd just gotten into um a relationship with my partner and it's like you know you're always eating out and you're going on dates doing this that and the other so all that kind of stuff adds up um and yeah, it just kind of started to go downhill from there. But I didn't really realize, you know, I didn't have that moment where I was like, whoa, what's happened? Until maybe when I was about 23, 24. Okay. Um, and at that point, I had like a genuine moment where I looked myself and I was like, that is not the same person I mean in my head I feel better and you know I was very lucky because my partner was very um pivotal for me in this in this whole emotional side of it like trying it kind of helped me having someone that could see me for me to then come out of my head and not see somebody else in the mirror when I look at myself like I was able to to look at myself and be like no you can you know you're actually more than what you see um and I think that was a lot of unpacking all of those feelings all those emotions that actually drive you to do that in the first place so yeah it was was a big time there's a lot of change but about I'd say about the age of 23 24 that's kind of when I started trying to actively um get into a fitter place I guess that wasn't that wasn't long before the pandemic and all the lockdowns was it no so yeah no not too not too long ago that started Mm. so that's that's interesting timing how did you find trying to navigate that during the start of uh you know all the lockdowns etc i mean i was in a really good uh motion i had i was really enjoying going to the gym i was enjoying like just how it made me feel but i didn't have like I wasn't working with you at this point, so I didn't have like a, a routine. I didn't have um, a workout plan to follow. I didn't have amendments to make. I didn't know to, you know, you have to continuously drive the same movements to continue improving those movements and continue adding weight to those movements and continue making adjustments based on how those movements work for you. Whereas I was, it was like a carnival in there. I was doing everything and anything. Mm. And I felt good, don't get me wrong. But what I really went off was, my apple watch and like telling me how many calories i burned and i wouldn't feel successful if i hadn't burnt like over 400 calories in a session mm. and sometimes i haven't got time to burn 400 calories in a session because unless i'm doing a crazy crazy workout that's not going to happen you know when you're especially with um working with weights it's a very like you're usually still and you're usually working on a specific part of your body so you know your heart rate is going up but the calories that you're burning wouldn't be the same as if you were going running a marathon or cycling or doing cardio or whatever. Um, so yeah, I just still go around everywhere doing all sorts around the gym. And I enjoyed it, but mm. I definitely needed that structure. And then how did you find, so how did you find it when, when all the gyms shut? Yeah, that's, that was a tipping point for me mentally. Yeah. Because by that point, yeah, I remember that. I was in a really good routine. I was going to the gym about three, four times a week. Um, 
and I've been working throughout the whole pandemic because of the job that I have mm. so I didn't feel like out of a routine because I was still going to work every day but for me I needed to have that release and everything was going absolutely great until they they shut down the gyms for me that was a big turning point in everything and I think at that point I almost accepted like I'm never gonna gonna get out of this this cycle that I'm constantly in you know I'm never gonna reach my target or it was just a dark time I think in my fitness journey definitely would you say like would you say during the pandemic did you manage to make like how would you say your progress went? did you just stop working out completely like you didn't do home workouts your nutrition went out the window you kind of just stopped caring again with that how was that yeah, yeah. definitely I during the pandemic I hit like I would say almost my heaviest weight mm. um body weight right yeah and yeah that was really scary for me like and I've got one of those scales that you can see like your body fat your visceral fat you know all of this kind of stuff and I was just looking at all these numbers and I was thinking that is not good mm. that is not good but at the same time I felt like I was so far deep down in this hole of probably self-pity to be honest <laughs> that I just couldn't get out of it like I was eating rubbish I was feeling rubbish you know like I, I didn't even have the inside effort inside me to kind of keep up with my skincare and like all of this stuff and it was just a really nasty time um but yeah I it got to the point that I was just sick of feeling like that and I was kind of throwing myself a pity party and I didn't like that because it's not really my cup of tea mm. um that's when you came in <laughs> mm. so well I, have, well I have a few questions before I start speaking about that would you quite yeah that's that's uh that must have been like a real crazy moment when you, you stepped on the scales and you saw the heaviest ever weight uh yeah yeah i because but it's like but one thing you said there and actually i see this a lot uh this when when you're so you feel like you're so far into you know wherever you are at that point that there's just no point because you feel like there is just so much so long to go and again i see that happen mm -hmm. all the time it's why people don't want to work out because they feel like what's the point you know i have it's just like it's going to take me so long to, to get to where i want to be but it's and i'm sure you know this now uh, but i'm only trying to push you know like so for example yeah you might feel like you have a long way but I'm telling you that once you do that workout and you finish it, that feeling of finishing your workout is going to be so worth it every single time. And, and Absolutely. that's just the workouts. So yeah, especially with everything else. And, and that's not to say that you have to do everything at once, even just working out. And if you don't care about your nutrition, fair enough. Uh, but if you, uh, if you don't care about your nutrition and you start working out, then that's still better than not caring about your, your nutrition and not working out. Yeah. That's where I'm going. So yeah, as long as there's positive steps in the right direction then that's that's great so that's that's good enough but um for sure but so yeah so you got to your heaviest ever weight and then and then we connected on instagram for a little while I think you were definitely you were following me for a little while before we um we started working together i know i said i definitely must have sent you a, a hey message like hey how's it going when you yeah yeah because yeah. i do that i try and do that with a lot of people because i know a lot of people find personal training is quite intimidating, so I try and take that barrier down um, just by saying, hey, how's it going? Don't hesitate to ask me any questions. And yeah, how how did you find, so yeah, what did you think? Like, so when you first started following, what made you decide, okay, you know what, I want to sign up with Team Careers Online, work with Leo. Like, what was the thought process there? Um, you were very different, very different. Um, I felt very comfortable just following you uh like I started following you because obviously we've got a mutual friend um and he would tag you in his stories or like you'd share something that he was tagging and he'd share it and that's how I started seeing obviously I saw the changes in him as well like his his own journey was very inspiring for me um so that's when I started following you and I followed you for about a year or two before I you know we actually started working together and yeah I think it was you were just very real very human I think I was seeing you know the kind of before and after that you were putting up and the posts you were putting up and 
I felt like even as a follower, I was learning so much from you that was very, um, very beneficial to the way I looked at stuff. It, it helped me a lot in terms of the whole emotional, emotional attachment I had to having that control over food and body weight and all that kind of stuff. So before we even started working together, I already felt very at ease with you. Um, and every once in a while, I would just shoot you a couple of questions. And, you know, that's normally, and I've had it before, like I've asked a PT something um, or a coach on Instagram and they were like, yeah, if you want to like send over this, I can send over an invoice and we can have a conversation. And I just like that's people cool. were kind of almost charging you to answer a question. Mm. which realistically you can go on google and figure out the, the answer but it's personal when it comes from somebody um but yeah that was that was a shocking one for me but no you're very normal very human very down to earth and the most important part for me was definitely the pictures that you had of your own clients that you're putting up and I felt like it was achievable you know you'd have a client that for example I've been working with you for let's say six months and I've lost just over a stone. But in some some PT's eyes, they're like, you can do that in a month. Why would you wait six months to do that? Mm. You know, and for me, that was what was really nice. I felt like it was achievable, it was a slow progress, it was steady, and it was these people are probably still living their life, you know, they're not restricting themselves. Um, there's no magic fix. Mm. And it just felt real, like I could relate to it. Mm. And and you see, that's, that's, it's like you said, like, I think too many people would hear that at face value and just take that for what it is. But, you know, you've, you've lost a stone, but not only have you lost the stone, like your, your, the, 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 the back-to-back pictures, when you put them side by side, mm. it's just, the difference is insane. And, and I think that's where the scale is also can be a bit misleading because yeah but like maybe the scale has gone down by a stone but I can t- I'm 100% confident that even body fat is way lower than it was before um the amount of muscle you've gained in that time which is obviously going to be making the scales go back up because muscle needs to weigh mm. something is insane because you have gotten so much stronger as well so uh, your workouts yeah. are definitely working out a lot smarter now your deadlift is insanely stronger your so yeah for sure the get the, the amount of muscle you're gaining is just is, is a crazy amount um which is obviously a very good thing um and i'm sure that's coming from the structure within your sh- sessions now which i'm gonna mm. definitely assume from what you've said before are very different to what you were doing before you started with team carrots online right mm-hmm. definitely definitely like i do think it comes i'd say about 70 percent of it is definitely the structure because it's easy, like I can easily follow it. It's clear, you're there to answer any questions, you know, like even if if I'm not too sure of something, you've got the whole pack that shows you how to do everything online. So even if at that specific point, I can't wait for an answer on how to do something, like I can just go to something that you prepared earlier. Um, and yeah, it's crazy, like I feel so much stronger Sometimes I think <laughs> I think that people get really shocked when they see certain things that I do in the gym because you know I'm only five foot nothing and it's it's yeah people don't really expect it but it's a good feeling yeah. I do like it I think for me lifting heavy is is definitely something that I enjoy doing and I want to keep trying to do more and more of that because yeah it's a really good feeling and it helps a lot in day to day life. Oh yeah, for sure. exactly for sure. I think I think resistance training gets neglected so much, especially by beginners who are looking to to lose weight. Maybe where you were six months ago. So if you're just starting out, you're not too mm. sure what to do. Um, you've you've been going around in a lot of circles. I don't, for some reason resistance training is just not something people will go to, and it should, if anything, it should be one of the biggest go tos there, uh, because yeah, definitely it will help a lot. But there's nothing and. And I think it's very hard for people to imagine this when they're not strength training, but there is enough, there is no better feeling. And I'll say this with full confidence forever. There's no better feeling than feeling strong and, and knowing mm. you're stronger and knowing you can, you can, you know, do that weight on the bar. And even though it maybe looks quite intimidating, it's, it's a great feeling. And I'm sure you'd agree. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's, it's a really good feeling and I've got like some of my guys at work as well once our um because we have a, a gym in our workplace and some of my colleagues I got them to start training 
um, because they saw that I was going there every day after work. And they they always used to take the mick out of me. They were just like, you're literally putting on my body weight or this, that, and the other. And it was, it was it's a nice feeling <laughs> being the only girl on the team and lifting heavier than all of them. That, that yeah, I bet that was great. Yeah. Is there anything like you're doing now in the gym, like any sort of particular exercise and you're just like, I can't believe I can do this? Yeah, definitely. I think for me, the craziest one is my uh, seated row. Is it seated row? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, that was shocking for me. And I think I was really scared to kind of progress with that because... I felt like I had to progress in slow increments. I know, I think I told you this, but one day I was at my work gym and my colleague was like, oh, I bet you can't, you know, do that amount. And he just changed the amount. And it was so easy. And it was like a probably 40 kg difference to what I was pulling before. But I just felt like it was so easy. And I was so shocked by it. That one was one that I definitely won't forget. It was such a shocking moment for me because of how it, it went from one leap to another so quickly. I probably wouldn't have made that change for months. Mm. But yeah, it was it was a good one. Yeah, and I bet that was quite eye-opening for how much you were probably you were probably underestimating your strength. Not really in that exercise. You could have been yeah. very much doing it in others. And I guess that was quite an eye-opener. Yeah, it definitely helped me to not be so scared and adding strength. And I think the worst that can happen is you can't lift it or you can't yeah. lift it. Exactly. And you just go back down a little bit and you continue trying. But I think the key thing that I've definitely taken away from that is you still have to try. And there's no reason why every session you can't try to go to the next one as long as you feel comfortable. Yeah, um, yeah the worst that can happen is you stay on the same one as last week. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, You've got nothing to lose from trying. If you've maxed out the rep range for the prior weight, then you yeah, definitely give it a shot, 100%. I think that's just psychologically mm. it's just something that holds a lot of people back, especially when they don't understand the concept of progressively progressive overload, which I'm sure you've heard me beat the drum of so many times by now. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you understand very well. So yeah, that's why you're managing to pull it off. But I wanted to say, what would you say is like the biggest differences between the Melissa before June, so before we started together, and the Melissa today now? Uh, yeah um I think 2021 Melissa definitely at the beginning as well I think I was just like so focused on trying to work on myself mentally and trying to work on my goals and trying to do everything else that I was trying to do um I was missing like this massive part that actually now ties in really well with all of that and quite detrimental actually to to push that forward but I've learned a lot that I can apply it's a very transferable set of skills that you learn from working with you um and it doesn't just fall down to tracking your calories like there's so much more to it that I feel like I've, I've taken and I've been able to mold it and interchange it with other things that I use and not just in my fitness journey like literally in things that you do you know you could take a progressive overload for example and and apply that to yourself in other ways what what is the fear in trying to push further or trying to be better or trying to x y and z the worst that can happen is it doesn't work this time and you try again next time Mm. um but yeah I think I think Melissa in 2021 was a happy Melissa, but not happy in the well-rounded way. Mm. There was a chunk missing in there. Um, I think Melissa now is definitely much more headstrong and capable of having the confidence behind the decisions that I make. Mm. And I feel like I don't need somebody to dust me off if I you know mess up or if I have an off plan day or it just I feel like I can do it myself I feel very self-sufficient um and yeah I'm not afraid to ask for help mm, that's good I think that's definitely something that I've learned yeah it's what holds a lot of people back they don't want to mm. yeah 
It right. is. It's the, it's the fear of failure and the fear of looking like you're less than what you actually are. Exactly. But yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong in asking for help. Yeah, whenever very helpful, wanted, actually. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, whenever I've wanted to improve in anything, I've always, I've always hired someone who's better than me at it. Always. That's what I've done mm. for training, for business, um, for content creation, because why am I going to, the way I look at it is, why am I going to waste time going around? Maybe I will make progress with it, but it will be a, a much slower rate of progress than if I could, could, if I could hire someone who would not only keep me accountable, but would also fast track it just in, by an insane amount. And uh, mm. every single time that's been the case. And yeah, it's just, yeah, I, I just think why, I always think, why would you not? It's an investment at the yeah. end of the day. Uh, that's how Absolutely. I Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, no, absolutely. Would you say um getting stronger has increased your confidence somehow? Yeah. Would you say that's played a role? Yeah, having physical strength literally goes hand in hand with the way your mental strength comes across. Mm. I think you know I'm a strong believer that everyone kind of has an energy and and a vibe that they emit when they're speaking to you and when they're you know when they're walking past you. You know, people can call it an aura or whatever you want to call it. But for me, I feel like everyone has a vibe. Everyone has energy about them. Um, and you can see it even like I love to people watch. Mm. I, that's just the nature of my, you know, I love obviously psychology. So for me, I love to look at people and kind of think about what they're thinking or what does their walk mean about how they feel about themselves and all of that kind of stuff. And I think there is that, like, it gives me a confidence that almost feels better than a really nice outfit working out the way you found it like it's this confidence that's stuck with you no matter if your outfit's bad if your hair's not working if you're feeling hungry if you know no matter what's going wrong you've got this specific thing about you that is very stuck it's mm -hmm. there it's very concrete you feel like you can achieve much more mm -hmm. and um, really. even like a couple of weeks ago we got a new sofa and my partner was supposed to come with me to pick up this sofa and turned around last minute and couldn't due to work. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go to the other sofa. And I did, and I bring it down like four flights of stairs in one place, loaded it into the van and a van myself, drove it and then brought it up all the flights of stairs in this place. And it was just, I kind of had that thing about myself where normally I'd be like, oh, I'm going to have to rearrange this and wait until somebody can come with me. I was like, nah, I'm not wasting my time in the gym for no reason. <laughs> I can pull the sofa up. It's okay. I love that. That's <laughs> I didn't know about that story. So, yeah, it definitely, honestly, it gives you like a proper confidence. And I think you can almost fool yourself into actually carrying things out if you have the confidence to believe that you've got that strength in you. Mm, yeah. Take it till you make it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and actually, or maybe I'm back. I'm backtracking here a little bit, but actually, I came up uh, something else sprung to mind, and just out of curiosity, when so when it was like coming towards the end of the pandemic or during the pandemic, when you were at your heaviest weight, would you say mm -hmm. when you so when you stepped on the scale and you saw how much you weighed, would you say because obviously nowadays your your def like obviously as part of the data collection, you're you're weighing yourself often, and. Uh, just to you know to to know where we stand because as you know by now weight fluctuates immensely. Would you say back then did you have like a big fear of weighing yourself? Would you say some people do? Yeah. Would you say you did? Or like taking these absolutely progress? Yeah. Yeah, I think the reason I didn't weigh myself for so long, even though I had a fully functional scale in my house, mm. um, was definitely that. Like I used to actually get anxiety attacks over putting myself on the scale. Like it got really bad because people focus so much on the number that's on the scale without figuring out all those other things. And it was, um, it was a really big reason as to why I came up with that list that I shared with you, you know, like keeping track of lots of oh, yeah. non-scale well, victories. Tell me about that. Tell me about that. Cause yeah, you know, it was because of the scale that you really- to, you, have to, you have to start doing this. If, if the scale bothers um, you. Yeah. And I think even if it doesn't, because it yeah, makes you I'd see agree. things in so many ways. Um, so I just started this little list on my phone notes and I would take like every single little non-skill victory that I had um, and just jot it down and yeah. some days I'd add five some days I'd add nothing and eventually it just became longer and longer and longer uh, and yeah it was really cool and sometimes I like to look back on it when I feel a bit crappy about 
where I'm at or if I have like a plateau or I don't feel like I'm doing enough or I just look back at it and realize how far I actually have come mm. um and it's really small things like I, I think I put something about going down two sizes on my apple watch and um you know a pair of jeans fitting me that I've never worn before because it's always had the tag on or all of that kind of stuff um and it was yeah it was a really nice way I think of keeping myself um not just relying on the scale weight and especially in the days that I felt like the scale was doing me dirty because I have those days because it will I'm sure. It to I'm, sure. <laughs> I'm sure my scale is rigged um yeah it just it kind of helps you come back down to earth and, and yeah. realize that and now you're just a human like you're actually doing really well and, and yeah I recommend it when, a lot for anything what's your three favorite things on the list remind me Three of your favorite oh, things. You can grab the list if you want. Yeah, I'm, Let me I, have a look. I remember when you showed it to me. I think it was about two months ago. It was in November, uh, and I, I I read it, and I was just like, "This is amazing." Um. Yeah, I think my top one. I would say that going down from a size 18, 20 to a fourteen. Mad about my bank bank I didn't write that it doesn't appreciate it <laughs> um and at the moment it's such a weird thing because I've always loved to have like loads of clothes and stuff like that but I can't actually like I'm rotating between the same five or six outfits right now because as you even if your scale weight stays the same or similar I feel like my clothes fit differently and all of a sudden something that I was wearing before it fits in a different way and it no longer looks acceptable to wear it like that mm -hmm. um but one thing I am doing differently this time around is that I'm not actually keeping those clothes for just in case I get to that size again I'm getting rid of that real quick yeah you're because so. no you weren't and uh and it's because it's like we were speaking about earlier even though your scale weight is staying the same or similar your body composition is changing drastically and I promise that a lot of that mm. has to do with the resistance training, you getting stronger, gaining muscle. And meanwhile, whilst you're doing all of that, you are still losing fat. And uh, and yeah, and it just shows in the fact that your bank account is not happy with how how much you're having to <laughs> no. clothes. And it's not, no. Um, and I think my other two favorite ones are definitely feeling confident enough to show my latest tattoo. So I've got, um, you can probably see it like when I, my progress pictures, but got my sternum tattoo done. And I think that was something that I told myself I would do once I get to one stone down, because it felt like a really good way to celebrate that achievement for me. And just having the confidence to, to even wear that um, and to have that, yeah, I really, it felt like a very intimate tattoo because you have to have someone literally like, on a part of your body that is so vulnerable for you um but yeah it was really good I felt really good about it that was a really good one and uh I also put that my favorite jumper is too baggy so I had to order a replacement jumper as a size small and that one for me was a good one as well because uh -huh. I used to order like XLs so wearing a size small uh yeah that's crazy good. that's a huge difference Melissa, this is crazy. Yeah, the the thing that you're listing off is it's, it's insane. And and obviously, just like anyone, you are gonna feel like some days where maybe things aren't maybe you feel like nothing is going right, maybe you're going through a little bit of a more stressful period within your life. But you know what? That list there, that all of that is hard concrete facts. And and it's just it's just a reminder of how much how much how well you've done. I think it's just it's so impressive. I'm I'm re personally I'm really proud of you. I think you've done I think you've done so amazing Thank you. done so well. I'm I'm super excited for for this year for you because I know it's only going to keep getting better, especially um, with the way you speak about yourself now. Um, mm. I, I, just the way you speak, it's 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 changed since June. The way you speak, not only about yourself, like you can tell there's a, a different type of just a different type of vibe, more confidence. As you say, yeah, definitely. Definitely, I feel it. I yeah. feel it. Was, but otherwise, was there was there any other questions you wanted to 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 go over? Was there anything you wanted to ask while we're here uh, before I, I wind it down? Um, Feel free. 
Yeah, I wanted to ask you a question. Okay, go on. So, ready. my question for you is, I know that you're very much like into your like self-growth and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And like you said, you know, you always hire someone that's better than you to mm-hmm. coach you into what area you're working into. But like, firstly, what do you do like to ensure you always remain personable towards your clients? But also, why? How, why, why is that your thing to you? Because that is what drew me to working with you in the first place. Wait, you know, so, like you said, you always reach out, reach out to your clients and send them that message even before they become a client just to kind of make them feel comfortable. But what is it about being personable with people that drew you to try and become that person? Because it definitely separates you from other people. Okay, yeah. So by personable, do you just mean like, more approachable because i'm going to be honest I, I, yeah I definitely know. definitely yeah like you're quite an approachable person but what is it about being approachable or personable that keeps you wanting to to be that person or what's made you want to to be that person in the first place um you know there's probably a few reasons for it i think i think number one and you know what there's probably yeah, there's, there's definitely a few reasons for it. Like, there's a few going through my mind right now, and I'm just trying to, you know, having to say them, all, not all at once, go through them one by one. But there is a mixture of reasons, some more personal, others business-wise. And uh, I would say number one, it's just because I am genuinely like that as a person. I can I can speak to anyone and everyone. Um, like, if I always feel like, I, I've said this for years, even before I've started doing what I do, like, if conversation is not flowing, is because maybe the, the other person is probably make, maybe making it not flow. Uh, and yeah, again, I'm just so, I feel, I feel like my confidence grew a lot at university um, beforehand. Would I say I was, I would say I was confident, but I wouldn't say I could really just speak to anyone and everyone. But um, after I done an, I went on an exchange here in the US, uh, went completely by myself, no friends, no family. And out there, I was just, yeah, I had to, it was either, you know, speak to everyone and anyone or just be alone by myself the whole time. So it kind of started there. I, I got mm. used to just speaking to complete strangers who completely different backgrounds to me. Um, and yeah, and I would say, yeah, I gained so much confidence from doing that because not only did I have to do that a few times, I literally had to do it every single day there, uh, especially within the first few months. Um, so that's where I would say I got very good at it because when I got back from my year in the, my time in the USA, I did have some friends who said there is a noticeable difference in how you speak to people, speak to people. And then obviously the more you do it, you just, um, uh, you, you get more confident. And then, so in addition to that, I would also say that I was once a beginning in my fitness journey. And I know for a fact, if someone's following my, my personal training account where, you know, I'm just talking a whole load of stuff about nutrition and training, then there is obviously it's obviously because they want to change and because they're or either that or they're interested yeah. in what I do and so and I know that and I know for a fact that most people within the target audience that I that I'm reaching at so the the, the target audience that I have in mind they are generally going to come from a place where they don't feel very confident and because and the reason why I know that very well is because I was once that person um and I know for a fact that if, if a personal trainer who had reached out to me when I had first started my journey, I would have absolutely loved that. And just knowing yeah. that I have someone there would have just been amazing. So, yeah, sometimes it's just like I'm just almost trying to, you know, it's like speaking to a younger version of me. Um, so I always try and, you know, make that person feel that little bit, that more, that bit more comfortable with speaking to me and show them that they can mm-hmm. more than happy for them to, to send over whatever, because I always try and reply to people. Um, and I always try and, you know, get them, them comfortable with me. Um, because again, that's why I made that account. I'm more than happy to, to help people. Uh, it's, and, and I'm happy to do it for free, as you said, because, mm. and this is where the business side comes from, because people aren't going to, it's very rare, rare someone hires you off the bat. You know, people are, they'll want to have a few interactions with you, see if they, you, you, like how helpful you are before investing in you. And um, of course. and that's obviously why I make the articles, etc., and obviously the podcasts here as well. But I think showing them that you are someone that is approachable, that you, they can feel relaxed when they speak to you, is I think that's probably going to be the number one thing. 
Um, and that's why I literally try and message every single new follower. Uh, obviously, there's probably people I, I miss out or forget, but I do try my best with messaging everyone. Um, so I would say it's, it's a combination of those things um, because, yeah, because they are obviously more likely to, to invest in you at the end of the day in the long term. And even if they don't, this is the way I look at it. If they don't, even if they don't uh, ever buy from me, I'm totally okay with that because at the end of the day, I lose absolutely nothing from helping someone. I've just helped someone. Like I, what? Yeah. Like I haven't lost anything. So it's like, why wouldn't I do it? Do you know what I mean? And so yeah. that's that's uh, that's how I feel about it. It's just the I don't know if I articulated that in the best way, but those are probably the three most I would say prevalent factors that come to mind when. Uh, yeah when i when I, just with how yeah i why i commun try and communicate with as many people as i can and it's still at a manageable number like my instagram isn't like has it has not got thousands of followers but what i do try and do is try and do try and build a, a good relationship with the people that i do have there and oftentimes that's that's what's most important absolutely absolutely and like i said it does completely set you apart from from other people mm. And I think you almost kind of cater to a certain, you know, you, you almost bring in the right people for what you can do and the right people that need your help from being the way that you are. Um, yeah, it's very admirable. But I just kind of wanted to, to yeah, to know mm. what, what, makes you, what makes you see that as the way, because it's interesting. I do like it. Yeah, no, you know, yeah, yeah, because, uh, yeah. People, I think people do oftentimes just need that, that um, just that friendly, that friendlier face, that friendly voice, mm. to, that they, they know they have someone there if they ever need someone to, to ask these questions to. Because, man, the fitness yeah. industry can be intimidating. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's how I feel about it. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Mm. And Definitely. I, think, I think if you're at the start of your journey and you're following the wrong type of people, I know, uh, you know, obviously there's, I wouldn't say there's the wrong type of person for everyone. I think there's, there could be the wrong type of person for where you may be at, where you as a person mm. uh, may be at in that particular point in time. Because I think I've, I've seen it many times before. Someone, there's many people that follow, I don't know, for example, physique athletes who just, and it makes them feel even more insecure. And they always talk, and they'll talk about how insecure they make them feel. And I'm just like, so why do you follow them? Mm. I was like, if it's I don't know if it's making if it's triggering a reaction in you from in some sort of way, then why do you follow them? Uh, because no one's making you. Uh, so I do think yeah, definitely pay attention to what type of person you're maybe following in regard to where you are. Some people love following certain people, and it and obviously it pushes them. But everyone's different. So I think yeah, it's just being being mindful of uh, who's whose content you're taking in because obviously you can everyone will create their own environment at the end of the day on social media. No, absolutely. And I think as well, one thing with your with your posts is a lot of people love to use so much jargon or not even they love to use it, but they mention even when they talk about certain workouts and certain equipment or certain movements and they break everything down into letters. And, you know, for someone that doesn't know what that means or doesn't go to the gym or even if they do go to the gym, they might not even know what that means. Mm. Um, you can throw off completely but in terms of like your post everything is broken down so just it can anyone that reads it can understand it doesn't mm. matter what level you're at doesn't matter if you ever step foot in a gym or not um and i think that in itself helps you helps you be uh, be different yeah so a lot of people out there like i'm sure there's other people out there that also do the same thing um but in terms of anyone that i've seen or spoken to or worked with and i have one for a lot of those people uh yeah it definitely sets you apart well, that's definitely sets you apart. So I'm, I'm glad to hear because obviously that's that's what i'm trying to do um it's like i said I, I try i have i would say i have like okay i have like my ideal person in mind and that i want to work with and i basically just make every mm. post for that one single person and just try and make it as yeah. specific as possible and, and i don't know if you've heard the same before and uh i'm probably i'm not going to say it word for word because i don't remember but it's something like if if you have a complex subject, but you can't explain that complex subject and break it down in a very simple way, then you don't actually know much about that subject. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. 
I think when someone overcomplicates it, obviously it depends on their target audience. Um, but I think, yeah, sometimes maybe someone will overcomplicate something. And I was guilty, of, uh, I was very guilty of this a few years ago. When they overcomplicate over a subject, that's probably because they don't know much about it. Wow. Yeah, you're kind of making up for the, the, the small percentage of the knowledge you have in the subject by trying to, you know, come across as you know all of it. Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Simplicity is key. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, so I've I've learned just keep it just keep it simple because people don't care about most of the things that I I probably care about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, was there anything else you wanted to to go over while we're here? Don't no, have that was it. I've got I've got all day, so there's no rush. <laughs> That's kind of all I wanted to to know. It's more intriguing, kind of like like I said, you know, more the psychological side of it, like what what makes you strive to be you the way you are mm. um but no nah, i really enjoy being on there mm. i know we've been trying to schedule it for a while but i'm, I'm glad that we've both joined our diaries yep yeah. and got it um yeah i'm glad to have have you here as well again melissa thank you so much for coming on uh, thank you for sharing your journey because that's not an easy thing to do for a lot of people and again as i said before you have done so, so well over the last six months. It's, it's a completely different person already. And it's only been six months. Um, and, to, and just the thought of going through 2022 with you and, you know, to con, you know, continue this journey of yours. I'm so excited for you because I know you're going to, gosh, I feel like I'm about to sneeze. I know you're going to, I just know you're going to keep <laughs> it so well. Yeah. And I, it's, it's, Thank you, I'm so excited because that, that list of, Again, the non-scale weight victories, it's just insane to see. Um, and, you know, the small messages that you share about when you need a new work uniform uh, because they don't fit you anymore, just things like that. Mm. Yeah, it's just a, a reminder as to the work that you're putting in. So, yeah, well done, Melissa, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If, uh, I know that I put in the work and ultimately it falls down on if I do it or not, but having your guidance has honestly been like a massive 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 yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't have been able to change my mentality if I didn't have someone teaching me how to do that mm. Mm. so yeah. yeah ultimately thank you well I'm glad to hear uh now this is the final point and you definitely don't have to do this if you don't want to uh, it's totally up to you mm -hmm. if you want to share your social media handle then feel free uh, otherwise yeah, yeah, I mean, can do definitely. Um, I, I don't post anything very interesting. Um, but my Instagram is M E L I R S O U S A, and um, I mean, if you're feeling nice, you can donate. <laughs> I'll be cycling to to Brighton from London in yeah. June. So yeah, feel free. Link in the bio. Yeah, it's for advertising good myself here. Yeah, so, and yeah, don't, I'm sure if maybe if anyone wants to reach out to you because maybe they're going through something similar to what you were a year ago, Absolutely. then I'm sure, I'm sure that they can. Uh, if you're listening from Melissa's side, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to me. You know, we, me and Melissa literally just had a, a whole conversation about this subject. So feel free to message me. I don't care if I don't, if we've never met um, or if you have like, I don't know, several, several questions for me, I'll answer them all. Um, Do it guys. <laughs> Do it. Take the message. My Instagram is at Leo Alves PT. A Alves being spelled A-L-V-E-S. So Leo Alves PT. And then my website is Team Keros Online. Uh, Keros being spelled K-A-I-R-O-S. Team Keros Online dot com. Uh, I have loads of articles on there that you can check out. Uh, yeah, articles. I have calorie. Cal I have a calorie calculator on there. If you if you want to use that, uh, I have free downloadable content about nutrition and training. So there's loads of freebies on there. Uh, loads of stuff to, to educate you on your, on your journey, regardless of where you're at. Um, so again, don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you so much, Melissa, for coming on. Thank you very much.